Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. This is part three of Beyond the Coverage Tour de France from the 2022 because we're getting ready to start the 2023 Tour de France in less than a month's worth of time here in 2023. So let's go ahead and finish up part three here of the Tour de France because yesterday I went in detail with stage 11 and why Tadej Pogacar lost the Tour de France yellow jersey there on stage 11 going up Granon. Now today, we're talking about stage 12. This is Alp Duez stage. On stage 12, this was a magnificent stage here for Tom Pitcock for Enos that did some incredibly descending skills to bridge up to the break and win from the break, dropping everyone going solo up to Alp Duez to win. But what happened behind? Well, we had Primoz Roglic back there trying to help defend and set some pace going up Alp Duez, but he's not on top form after that stage five crash. He does some work on Alp Duez, and then we're going to see Tadej Pogacar going to work. But Jumbo Visma's Jonas Vinigo does everything he can to hold on to Tadej Pogacar's wheel through all of the attacks all the way up Alp Duez for those two riders to finish right next to each other. So Tadej Pogacar gains no time back, and he needs 2 minutes and 22 seconds. Now we go into the next stage, 13. Stage Mads Pedersen wins. Nothing happens here on stage 13 because it's not a real battling stage for the GC guys. So that'll bring us into stage 14 when Michael Matthews wins up at the airport in Mont. Now this climb going up to the finish is famous. I did it way back in 1998 with doing Tour de Midi and that was my first experience up it. It's incredibly steep. Was expecting a big battle between Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo. And Tadej Pogacar did not disappoint on this stage. He went deep trying to drop Jonas Vinigo all the way up this climb. But Jonas was having none of it and was locked onto his wheel. Now every stage, when we're talking about the mountain stages, when everyone's talking about how Jonas Vinigo dropped Tadej Pogacar, well, we know on stage 11, yes, officially he did drop him, but I like the details. I want to know why. I want to know, did you flat? Did he crash? Did he bonk? Did he attack too much? Did he spend too much time in the wind or what? Well, this is what I'm talking about with the flame when I bring it up on, on part one and part two. Tadej Pogacar is flying the flame a lot of times on these last stages when we're talking Alp Duez, stage 12. And now we're talking about going up to the airport a month. Now, these are big hits that Tadej Pogacar has to do to try to get rid of Jonas Vinigo, and he's not able to get rid of him. As each stage progresses, Tadej Pogacar being out in the wind, trying to start that flame going, and then being out in the wind, he's burning that flame hard, and then the wind's always blowing it out with, with Jonas Vinigo locked on the Tadej Pogacar's wheel. We start getting into stage 15. It's a sprinter stage that Jasper Philipson wins, so there's no GC battle on that stage. But now we're going into stage 16, and this is the stage Hugo Ull ends up winning. Now, he did a fantastic job being away in the breakaway, and then again, we'll see the battle back there against Tade Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo battling up this last climb. They don't come out with anything, and in fact, UAE Team Emirates, not only does Tade Pogacar waste some energy, more energy here at the Tour de France on stage 16, but he'll lose two riders back there because Soler won't make the time cut. And Rafael Micah, when he was trying to do the hard tempo setting for Tadej Pogacar up the climb, it snapped his chain, if I remember correctly, and his knee went straight into the handlebars. And that ended the Tour de France for Mark Soler on this stage 16, and it ended for Rafael Micah. Those are big hits. Remember, Soler was incredibly strong on the Granon stage. So you could use that strength. Tadej Pogacar could use the strength of Marc Soler and Rafael Micah when we're talking about stage 17 and 18 that's coming up when we start talking about having three mountain stages in a row. Now we get into stage 17. UAE team Emirates are down multiple riders. You got George Bennett out. You got Vegard out. You got Mark Soler missing. You got Rafael Micah dropping out and not starting this stage 17. That means Brandon McNulty has to do the bulk of the work along with Mikhail Björk and really set some hard tempo on the stage 17. They do. Brandon McNulty ends up blowing up the field. He's got it down to three riders. It's just Tade Pogacar and Jonas Vinigal. But when we're talking about Brandon McNulty, he's going full gas up there. Still can't set the pace fast enough, though, to drop off Jonas Vinigo. Who can? The kid's on flying form for Yumba Visma. But Tadej Pogacar does win the stage 17. This was a big blow, though. You look at it and go, Chris, that's his third stage victory for Tadej Pogacar. He's sitting second at the Tour de France. That's all true, but 
He's still more than two minutes behind Jonas Vinigo at the end of stage 17, and that leaves us only one stage left. We're talking about stage 18, the stage up to Otacom, and then an individual time trial that's left, but for the last mountain stage, it comes tomorrow on stage 18. When this stage starts, we see UAE team members and they just are lacking in the power that they had on stage 17 because they just running out of energy, right? You burn the flame, the wind blows it out. Brandon McNulty was on the front on stage 17 a lot. Now he's paying for those those chips that he threw in on 17, and we also know Mikhail Bjerg is paying a lot. Now the other teammates, we're talking Mark Mark Hershey, that's just not a ton of strength when he hasn't been on form since day one here at the Tour de France. So once we get into this last mountain road stage at Otacom, we'll see the attacks start coming on the penultimate mountain. Once they do, Tade Pogacar is lighting things up left and right. We see that Garrett Thomas is getting popped off the back many times, but then every time Jonas Vinigo stays with Tade Pogacar, Tade Pogacar has to back the throttle down, and that's allowing G. Thomas to get back on. He'll do one big hit again, Tade Pogacar, and he'll go over the top of the penultimate climb with Jonas Vinigo locked on his wheel. Now the Slovenian up front, UAE team members, Tade Pogacar, he's driving it down the descent, gets off into the gravel and crashes his bike. We see that Jonas Vinigo waits for Tade Pogacar, and this is a wise move. There is no reason not to wait. He has Wout Van Aert already up the road, so unless you can bridge that gap up to Wout Van Aert and have Wout Van Aert pull down the descent, there's no reason for Jonas Vinigo to start attacking going down the descent and have Tade Pogacar chasing back him and him and Jonas Vinigo in the wind. Remember, if you're in the wind, they're blowing the flame out, right? So Jonas Vinigo up front, backs the throttle off, goes back to Tade Pogacar's wheel. This is great. You see Tade Pogacar appreciates the effort, but really it's to his detriment, not to Jonas Vinigo's detriment to wait because once Tade Pogacar catches up, where does he go? He goes into the wind. Jonas Vinigo sitting second wheel all the way down the descent and into the final climb of this year's Tour de France in 2022, the Eau de Camp. Now, once they go up the last climb here of the 22 Tour de France, the last real big important climb anyways, there's always some bump somewhere else along the way to the finish when we're going all the way into the Shams a couple days later. But when they start Otacom, we see Wild Van Aert there. Tade Pogacar has been in the wind way too long. They catch up with Wild Van Aert. Jonas Vinigo goes up to the big guy's back wheel and says, drill it. And it's actually Wild Van Aert that's making Tade Pogacar suffer and lose any chance of winning this mountain stage on Otacom or dropping Tade or dropping Jonas Vinigo before the finish here at Otacom, which I don't believe was ever going to happen when Tade Pogacar went up the penultimate climb here on stage 18 and can't get rid of Jonas Vinigo on that and then crashes. So when you're watching and we come into the finish of stage 18 on Otacom, we see Jonas Vinigo going solo after Wout Van Aert set him up perfectly on this last mountain stage of the Tour de France. Tade Pogacar is left back there swinging. He'll finish second on the stage. Jonas will win the stage. And this will pretty much look like the Tour de France in 2022 is wrapped up here for Jonas Vinigo. But we do still have one time trial left. Okay, we go into stage 19, and this is the stage that Christophe Laporte, Jumbo Visma wins. Now, this, this was crazy. Remember, Jonas Vigo wins stage 18. Stage 19, when we see Wout Van Aert dominating the Tour de France on anything that's not an absolute out-of-category climb at the Tour de France, we see Wout Van Aert decide to not go for the sprint stage on stage 19. He gives Christophe Laporte the green light to go up the road. Christophe Laporte, with about two kilometers to go, if I remember correctly, he jumps across to the front brake that's just getting caught at the near the finish of the line. We see it's Fred Wright up there, and Fred Wright's going full gas into the line, even though Christophe Laporte's on his wheel. And then Laporte drops everyone and goes solo into the line. This was a crazy stage 19. Who expected Wout, Wout Van Aert to give up a chance of winning another Tour de France stage? And that's what he did at stage 19. And then who would have thought it would have been Christophe Laporte winning stage 19 after doing so much work through the early parts of the Tour de France and then being able to win stage 19 backed up from the day before on stage 18, Jonas Vinigos went. Well, it's crazy. Jumbo Visma have been dominating this 2022 Tour de France, and then we go into stage 20. Well, stage 20 is the individual time trial. While Van Aert blitz it, and he wins stage 20, that means Jonas Vinigo wins stage 18, Christophe Laporte 19, and Wout Van Aert on stage 20. That is impressive to win with three different riders with a team that's already been riding on the front throughout the Tour de France. And you add into that, 
while Van Aert still has two more earlier victories here at the Tour de France, and Jonas Vinigo has stage 11 victory to add in on top of wearing the race leader's yellow jersey, the king of the mountain jersey, the green jersey. It's impressive what Jumbo has done when we start finish stage 20 individual time trial. Now we go back to the last two guys to battle on stage 20. Of course, it's Jonas Vinigo, Tadej Pogacar. Jonas Vinigo setting a blistering pace. Almost crashes and loses the Tour de France as we're coming into the last, what was it, four or five kilometers? I can't quite remember. He goes down the descent, swings through the left turn, off the road into the gravel there and just misses the mountainside, keeps his bike upright, gets it back onto the road. And then from then on, backs off the throttle a little bit, gets second on the stage and beats Tadej Pogacar by about eight seconds on stage 20 for Tadej Pogacar to know at this moment he's not going to win the Tour de France after this individual time trial stage 20 finishes. Tadej Pogacar was magnificent through the 2022 Tour de France. Jonas Vinigo and Jumbo Visma were magnificent. I don't think Jonas Vinigo was stronger than Tadej Pogacar, but could he climb sitting on his wheel? Absolutely. And there's a big difference between the rider that's taking the wind in the front and the rider that's sitting on. Regardless of how steep the climb is, there's always a benefit to sit in second and not have to attack. Like I told you guys earlier in part one and two, Remco Evnepoel said it best at this year's Volta Catalonia. It's easier to defend than it is to attack, especially when both riders, Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo, are on close to equal form. Now we get into stage 21 on the Shams, and again, while Van Aert gives up any chance of trying to win the final stage here at the Tour de France and sits at the back of the peloton, while we see Jasper Philipson take the win on the Shams Lisee to round out the 2022 Tour de France. Now, my whole take, and why I brought up this edition, this three part edition here on Beyond the Covers, Jonas Vinigo was talked about as being the best climber. I don't see it and don't agree with it in any way whatsoever. Tadej Pogacar was the best climber at the Tour de France and the strongest overall best rider in the Tour de France. But Jonas Vinigo and Jumbo Visma, along with Primoz Roglic and Wout Van Aert, made it Jonas Vinigo and Jumbo Visma team together that outpowered tactically smart tactics on stage 11, the way they played it out for the most part. It was brilliant. One of the best bike races you could ever watch, stage 11 of the 2022 Tour de France. And Tade Pogacar made a ton of mistakes throughout that stage 11 that he just could not make up for. UAE Team Emirates came under, came started the Tour de France with one less guy with Trentin. He was a valuable miss there for Tade Pogacar because stages two, three, four, especially five, that was a big mistake not to have a rider like Matteo Trentin that could look after Tade Pogacar through all the fighting and difficult flat stages. You get into the mountain stages, they lost George Bennett before stage 11. That was a big hit. Later before stage 17, 18, and 19 really got into it. We, we know that 19, Matteo Trentin was missed at the finish of that stage when there's fighting and going into the, along the river there. We go to 17 and 18, you're left with only Brandon McNulty to do any damage back there and try to split things up because Rafael Mike is missing, Brandon, uh, George Bennett is missing, and Mark Soler is missing as we went into the last two final stages of this year's Tour de France. So Tadej Pogacar was spending energy, immense amount of energy through all the wind, can, through all the wind riding the front and attacking, trying to be aggressive, instead of just having teammates that could sit on the front, drill it all day long for him, pop off all the Jumbo Visma riders, including Wout Van Aert, and leave just Jonas Vinigo, and then one big hit of acceleration where Tadej Pogacar could have shown that maybe his half a percent better in form might have gotten him that gap that he needed on Jonas Vinigo up one of the climbs and it never materialized. Or I'll take it to the most simplest way that I could explain the 22 Tour de France and Col de Grenade. What I really believe happened, one Coca-Cola, one Snickers coming down the Glivier. If, if Tadej Pogacar had it, even with all the tactical mistakes UAE Team Emirates made, if the director back there had passed out the window to Rafael Micah there, one Coke and one Snickers before the last climb starts, I don't think Tadej Pogacar loses stage 11. I think he actually wins stage 11, takes a few more bumps, Time bonuses there on Jonas Finigo, and we have to see a real close battle. And Jumbo Visma trying to be more aggressive again throughout the, throughout all the final stages of the Tour de France, talking 12, 13, 14, all the way to the end, because Tadej Pogacar would have finished 
Stage 11 in the race leader's jersey with one Coke and one Snickers. That's my take. Keep it in mind, that's a three-part series. A lot of work up here. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. One Coke and one Snickers sometimes might have saved the whole Tour de France. Millions spent and you only needed three more dollars at given at the right time. And Tadej Pogacar could have possibly have still have won the Tour de France in 2022. Make sure you like and subscribe. 2023 will should be an exceptional year when we see Jumbo Visma, if they can answer the call to come back at the 2023 Tour de France as strong as they did last year. It was announced this morning in Cycling News that Primoz Roglic won't be doing the Tour de France. So already Jumbo Visma won't have the same kind of strength to attack Tadej Pogacar in the mountains as we saw last year. And we know UAE team members have a stronger team for the mountains this year than they did last year. So if UAE team members could come into this stronger than what they did last year, which isn't going to be hard to beat with COVID positive starting out the 2022 season, Tade Pogacar is going to have a stronger team. The Umbo Visma is going to have a weaker team. And then we'll see straight up if Jonas Vinigo can drop Tade Pogacar like a lot of the comments have left in there saying that Jonas Vinigo is the best climber in the world when I don't believe it at all. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon.